Hi, so I'm Charlotte Fraza, a third year PhD student in computational neuroscience. Um, before I studied neuroscience, I actually studied theoretical physics. So one of the people I've always been fascinated by is Einstein. And the other week I read the fascinating book by Walter Isaacson on Einstein's life. And I really enjoyed reading it and learning about this super particular character from his marital struggles to his war activism. But aside from that, something that I also realized reading this book is that that Einstein has quite a particular way of approaching science, approaching physics, that I think would be really interesting to try for myself for 24 hours. And I hope by sharing some of his routines, some of his habits and some of his learning techniques with you, that you could perhaps implement it into your own life. So I will take you along to these 24 hours and let's get straight to day one. So the first thing I wanted to do when I started reading about Einstein and Einstein's routine is to really highlight what made him so different from other contemporaries at his time and his age. So the seven things that Einstein did is first he worked around 10 hours every day for around six days a week. The second is he used almost no telephones, no responsibilities and required absolute tranquility or he turned off all unnecessary information. The third is that he also always wanted to prove things himself. The fourth is teaching what you do not yet know. The fifth is playing music when stuck. The sixth is going on a long walk when stumped. And the seventh is pure focus and concentration no matter the circumstances. So today I want to dive together with you into these different techniques and I'm a little bit worried about some of them because I know some of them will be a little bit hard but let's get straight into it. So I just finished the three hours for my morning coding session. I had to do some coding for university and I just finished that. And aside from Einstein working 10 hours a day, it was actually also said that he tirelessly worked on his problems and one can say that he lives only for them. And his wife also says that I must confess with a bit of shame that we are unimportant to him and take second place. So I do have to say like, although I do think Einstein is quite an inspirational figure, it is quite well known that he gave up a lot of things for his science and he was really focused when he was working on his science problems. And I think this is quite important because if we focus on the aspect of him working 10 hours a day, it may seem that if you just work 10 hours a day, you will magically produce a lot of good work. But actually something that I've come to realize quite a lot is it's actually way more important that you put in some good hours with real true focus than that you put in some random hours where you're just kind of scatterbrained and not really focusing on the problem at hand. For example, it, he also said that I am often so engrossed in my work that I forget to eat lunch. And I think that really shows that Einstein, when he was working on problems and when he was doing things, he would forget all about the world around him. And that's not to say that you should forget to eat your lunch but it is to say that try to instead of focus on the amount of hours that you spend on the amount of like deep work that you do or the amount of focus that you have during those hours that you spend and that kind of brings me to the second point and that was that Einstein was also well known to turn off all notifications of everything so he said, no telephones, no responsibilities, absolute tranquility. I am lying on the shore like a crocodile, allowing myself to be roasted by the sun, never see a newspaper and do not give a hoot about the so-called world. And this was from a letter he wrote to Max Born. And I think this really shows as well how he lived in his daily life. Like he was quite known to be quite scatterbrained and sometimes not really up to date with all the latest world details or all the latest news. And I think especially in our age, Age of information overload we can learn quite a lot about this so I think it's okay if you have the ability to turn off your cell phone for example or your email to really allow yourself to be super focused on your work because it's quite well known fact that as soon as you get one email pop up that that can kind of disrupt the flow that you're in So 
I've been working for the last three hours on my paper and a piece of code that I have to write, but I've been noticing that I'm getting really, really distracted. And something that Einstein has been known to do is that he wanted to always prove things to himself. So he was said to tackle new ideas by trying to prove them on his own. And this approach to learning physics, which came naturally to Einstein, was driven by a strong curiosity, both to know how things actually work and a belief that nature could be understood as a relatively simple mathematical structure. And another thing that he is known to do is teaching what you do not yet know. And this is kind of similar to the Feynman approach, where you try to teach your students certain concepts or certain things that you yourself are a little bit stuck on. And through the process of teaching it to someone else, you actually come to understand it a little bit better. So I think this idea is really interesting. So if you're stuck on a problem as well, I would highly recommend trying to use these two techniques in your daily research. Okay, so amongst all of the things in Einstein's routine, one of the things that I found really interesting is actually the idea of what he did when he got stuck. Because I think a lot of us, when we do research, when we go to university, when we try to follow our courses, a lot of times we get stuck in the problems we're trying to solve. And especially if you work in physics or any type of mathematics related field, sometimes you notice that you just don't know the solution. And you just kind of feel like the longer I work on this, the less I understand and Einstein kind of did two things. The first thing that he did is that he played music when he was stuck. So music was no mere diversion. On the contrary, it helped him think. Whenever he felt that he had to come to the end of a road or faced a difficult challenge in his work, said his son Hans Albert, he would take refuge in music and that would solve all his problems. The violin thus proved useful during the years that he lived alone in Berlin, wrestling with general relativity. And the second thing that he did is that he would go on these really long walks or alone by himself or with friends. So on his walk back home, at midday, he would often be joined by three or four professors or students. Einstein would usually walk calmly and quiet, as if in a reverie, while they pranced around him, waved their arms and tried to make their points. When they got to the house, the others would peel off, but Einstein sometimes just stood there thinking. And I think by looking at this routine, we can actually get really inspired, because I personally really like these kind of diversions that don't take our attention away. Because actually, diversions through, for example, walking or music, allow us to have our mind occupied a little bit, but not so much that we cannot keep thinking on the problems. If you've ever studied physics or mathematics, you know that sometimes you just need a day or two, or there just needs to be some time in between until you get to the solution. But until you get that time, it's actually points of just waiting. And during this waiting, instead of just sitting in your room, I personally really like it to also play music. So I play guitar, for example, a little bit, or to not go on walks like Einstein did, but I personally do quite a lot of yoga, also because it's very rainy in the Netherlands. But I think it's a good idea to just kind of go over your routine and just really think about what kind of diversions do you have that don't take all your attention away, but that can help you in the moments that you're really stuck. And I would definitely recommend something that's relatively relaxing and something that's also not inherently distracting, like watching TV, for example. So I've tried to spend 24 hours going over the routine of Einstein or the Einstein method that he used. And I want to reflect on this routine with you a little bit, kind of the things that I learned trying to implement his routine, trying to go over the different things that he did and also how Einstein kind of lived as a creative genius in that sense. And something that was actually the most inspirational for me by reading the book on Einstein by Isaacson Walter is the realization that the one thing that set him most apart is his persistence and his utter focus. So he also had these moments of pure frustration or not understanding certain concepts, but he worked on them diligently every day, day in and day out. And he also never really lost his curiosity or his focused mindset. And I think that is just the most important. I don't think it's these tiny details that he didn't wear socks, for example, or that he sometimes forgot to eat lunch. I think it's just the main theme 
theme for him that he was just a really curious being and he found almost any concept of physics inherently interesting. So training yourself for pure focus and concentration no matter the circumstance is I think something that we can learn from him. So as a review of Einstein's learning method I would just say it's actually really unpretentious in some way. It's extremely dedicated and also as Einstein himself said he said I have no special talent. I am passionately curious and I think that's something that we can all learn just to be passionately curious about the type of work that we do and especially for me personally as a PhD student in neuroscience I definitely have these moments that I'm really stuck and I just think like what could set me apart or what could help me in this moment and I do really believe that it is to just be passionately curious and to just keep on trying to ask questions and try to help people around you ask those questions as well and then through hard work you will find the solutions yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into Einstein's routine. I would definitely recommend to read the book by Isaacson Walter on his biography as well as it was extremely interesting and I hope to see you next week. Bye!